Bonjour, I will present you the course Programmation sur plateforme mobile, Programming on mobile platform, that will take place at Université Pierre et Marie Curie for the academic year 2017-2018. This course has a long history. Uh, in fact, uh, trickily, it started in 2008 when uh, about one year after uh, the iPhone was released, uh, Apple released the uh, SDK, so Software Development Kit, for what was called yet uh, iPhone OS. Now it's called iOS 2. And uh, rapidly, uh, a large number of applications were designed and used in this new device. So Apple didn't invent the uh, smartphone, but they invented the smartphone that could be configured thanks to third-party applications, and it worked. In January 2010, uh, a first course on iOS was presented within the context of a project. And in September, we created the first course about this type of programming. And of course, every year, the course has to be upgraded because as you know, these environments, this is true for Android as well, uh, are dramatically uh, transformed and updated. In 2012, the course was recorded because uh, Apple requested us to do something on iOS programming in French on iTunes U. And then it was recorded and uh, uploaded again uh, the year after. And in 2014, we started to do a first MOOC on iOS that was uh, deployed on the France Université Numérique uh, platform. And also we had videos on iTunes U of the new season that was deployed uh, in 2015 again on fun. And in fact, there was a first iOS course uh, on, uh, as a MOOC uh, that was lasting 10 weeks and it was divided in two MOOCs of six weeks each because for a population of students that has a great diversity, a bigger diversity than our students, it was difficult. In 2016, uh, there were uh, new videos uh, for uh, the new upgrade of the course that was originally recorded in 2014. And in uh, 2017, this year, there were again two MOOCs on iOS each six weeks, but the courses were deployed on EDX this year instead of France Université Numérique. For political reasons, I uh, was not involved in the decision at all. This year, in, uh, for the academic year 2017-2018, we are reusing the course for last year. It's very difficult to upgrade every year. And in fact, the academic year is starting after the first official release of iOS 11. So it's a sort of a, uh, race between uh, Apple and us, and uh, it's, the timing is not well. But this year, we have an extra experiment that motivates the fact that some of those videos are in English. Um, this course will be shared with several universities, you have the list here, within the context of a European project called European Virtual Exchange that involved a larger number of universities. So when I'm recording this, I don't know yet how many students that we get from these universities, but this is why all the videos will be either in English or for those that are in French, they will be subtitled with an English translation. So, for Université Pierre et Marie Curie students, there will be online videos posted every week, and also you will have practice almost every Monday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And it works. Uh, we already have three years of experience of mixing videos and courses. Uh, and it works, especially if the students are playing the game. So if you are watching the videos before practice, if you are preparing a little bit your exercise, then when I'm here, uh, it's very easy to have a dialogue, to have discussions, to exchange about your solutions, etc., etc. Just note that 
the first week has a little bit more video than the others because there are more things to set up and after that the amount of video remains around two hours. So this year, I hope, uh, there will be uh, students that are coming from outside UPMC so they will also access the online videos and I plan to have, if possible, weekly YouTube live sessions where we can exchange and for example I can explain things and we will probably exchange with uh, email or with uh, Twitter or with the chat that apparently is uh, associated to YouTube Live. Uh, there will be later instructions for YouTube Live uh, because uh, at this stage uh, I don't have yet the license to use the software uh, to so I just tried with a uh, sort of demo version but it's sort of constrained and so I don't have already all the uh, instruction uh, yet but of course uh, you will be notified by email and uh, the idea is that UPMC students should come to practice and non-UPMC students have a way to come to practice and to discuss with me as for the UPMC students. So uh, this year uh, we are still sticking to iOS 10 with Xcode 8 okay and we also do a little bit of watchOS 3 at the end of this course. I already told you that iOS 11 is out a little bit late and I don't like that much to work with the beta versions of Xcode because there can be lots of modification unless you are using the very last uh, beta version. But then there are other conflicts with other elements of my schedules. We will do uh, Objective-C and Swift and we will use Swift 3. Uh, in fact Swift 4 is out with iOS 11 but there are not that many modifications between Swift 3 and Swift 4 and uh, everything in Swift 3 is backward compatible in Swift 4. Okay. Um, we will do more Swift than Objective-C but it's also interesting to have Objective-C for several reasons and I will come to that a little bit later. The organization of this course is 11 weeks about iOS and there will be three weeks on Android that will mostly concern our UPMC students because the course is not in video so we cannot provide it remotely. I will be the person to handle uh, the course and especially the first 11 weeks that deal with iOS and Etienne Renault, a former PhD student of mine, will deal with the Android part. The objective of this course is to let you master this type of programming. There are many needs and a few experts and lots of new stuff to invent in that area. So it's quite of interest. The idea is to give you an overview of what is possible with such devices and the way you can program them and to know how to go through documentation because everything is quite dense and the idea is to give you enough practice what I call in French heure de vol, flying hours uh, to give you a sort of uh, reflexes about how to solve this type of problems. So this is why there is practice every week and the idea is to have at least one application to do every week so regular work and uh, at UPMC uh, we will let, allow you to use devices that will be uh, borrowed to you uh, a few students, each student will be responsible of one uh, terminal and we have uh, several iPods, six generations so it looks like, like an iPhone SE like they will be representative of small devices. You also have iPad mini 2 and 4 and that will be representative of big devices. And you will see that things are behaving a little bit different from small to large devices. Okay. Uh, you can also use uh, your uh, devices. Uh, if you have some, we can deal with that. For non-UPMC students, as you will be uh, there remotely, it's difficult to borrow you some device, okay? So you have to check with the university, but for most of the practice, you can also use the uh, simulator. Uh, by the way, if you have the opportunity to use a device 
from university or your own. It's also very good because what you have in the simulator uh, usually is quite different from what you have in your device uh, because uh, you really deal with the real constraints of the device in terms of memory, of CPU, and also in terms of ergonomy. If you click with uh, your mouse uh, on a simulator, you click exactly at the right point. Your finger is much thicker, okay? And so uh, it's a way to experiment uh, such difference. Uh, for Android, there will be um, some terminals that will be uh, borrowed to you, but usually most of you have Android terminals so you can also, and it's easier to deal with uh, deploying application on Android than uh, in iOS. Uh, the students that will have these devices, they are responsible for the device, they take, they take care of the device for the semester, they will have to give it back to us after uh, the semester. And uh, the idea is to bring the device every week. A few words about the grading of this course. 65% of your grade will come from an exam that will be on computer. Basically, within a limited time and individually, you have to fill some empty part in a predefined project to achieve an iOS application. Then, uh, the exercise you provide every week will count for about 10% of your grade. And there will be uh, for UPMC students, a project that counts for 25% of the grade uh, for the Android part. Of course, for the non-UPMC students, uh, these will be uh, pushed back to 100%. They will not lose 25% if they cannot do the Android part. By the way, uh, usually students love to look for code on Internet. And it can be quite useful for understanding things. However, it's better for me to have a deep understanding of the code. And also, you really have to check within this domain the publication date of what you are reading and trying. Because, especially in iOS, APIs and frameworks do vary frequently. And so, a code that has been published two years ago may not be working anymore now, or you may miss a lot of things to have it work. Okay. And also, there will not be any internet connection during the exams. You will just have the documentation online that will be loaded on the computer. A few words about some pedagogical choices. Uh, concerning the building of user interfaces, several ways will be investigated but mainly you will deal with the programmatic way. Why? Because for me you are a computer scientist and you must know how it works. In fact, later on, you may find useful or nice to use what I call kindergarten. Basically you design uh, with a graphical user interface your interface, uh, but you need to know how it works behind. Okay, so it's a good experiment and then you handle more callbacks, etc., etc. The second choice deal with memory management and mainly with Objective-C. It's one reason you do Objective-C. There are two reasons, in fact. Objective-C has a lot of legacy in that area. So you still have to deal with Objective-C and you will probably still have to deal with Objective-C for quite a while. But also in Objective-C, uh, you have a way to handle memory manually or to activate what is called ARC, Automatic Reference Counting, that allows you to more or less transparently handle memory. And in fact, once again, you are master students, you are computer scientists, and I think it's quite important to know and understand deeply how memory works. Moreover, usually your generation have learned computer programming with languages such as Java, uh, where uh, memory management is not really an issue because it's automated. Okay? And so this is why uh, we choose to do both Swift and Objective-C. At the beginning, there will be really the two languages, but of course, later, we will 
more concentrate on Swift, uh, but uh, you still have somewhere some Objective C, and once again, it's good to know both languages in this domain. Let's tell more about uh, the third choice. In fact, Objective C has another advantage: it is very stable now. There are no syntactic changes, there are no semantic changes. While Swift is now becoming stable, okay? And in fact, in 2014-2015, uh, we chose to do Swift already, and it was a nightmare because while I was shooting my videos, in fact, the first videos I was doing using a version of Swift, Apple published another version of Swift, and my example were not more anymore compatible with this new version of Swift. And in fact, for Swift version 1 and Swift version 2, there were lots of evolution because it was not loudly told, but it was more or less in the beta stage. Now things are becoming more mature, and in particular, since 2016, so last year, uh, Apple developers started to develop their frameworks and applications directly using Swift. So they are now more concerned with legacy issues, okay, and so uh, the language is becoming more stable. In fact, you will see that in Xcode, you will have a lot of uh, mechanisms allowing you to upgrade from a version of Swift to another one, okay? It doesn't do 100% of the job, but it does maybe 95%, and of course the five remaining percent are the most difficult ones, but uh, it helps. But it's nice to see that apparently, I, I have not yet tried uh, Swift 4, but apparently uh, all the changes are backward compatible with uh, Swift 3, so uh, you might discover new capabilities, but what you wrote on Swift 3 should remain correct and should be able to combine. Let's have uh, some concluding remarks. First advice, practice intensively. Programming is based on experience. The type of programming you will experiment in this course is quite complex and the idea is that the more practice you will have, the more reflexes you will have and this will accelerate your heart, the way you behave face to a problem and then let you be more performant. So you must go through the exercise. The idea is to point out a large variety of stuff, a large variety of experiences and then acquiring these flying hours. So, I wish you good luck. A last thing, though. It's quite important that you use Xcode 8.3.3. This is particularly true for the students outside UPMC because we do not master the configuration on their computer room. Okay? And we will remain into iOS 10.3.3. Point three. In fact, a part of this course has been performed under Xcode 0, .0 and iOS 10.0, uh, but almost everything is compatible except for some issues with the design, uh, graphical design of the user interface, where some uh, buttons have uh, moved. Okay, but uh, we will discuss that with the live sessions for outside UPMC students and we will discuss that during our practical sessions with UPMC students. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.